By far and away, this was the wildest weekend in the national season as they came back in the ninth inning in two games and fell in one and won the other. We're going to discuss that and really break down what happened for your Washington Nationals. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your host, Ryan Clary, and thank you guys again for tuning in. If you haven't heard of us before, check us out on Twitter at LO underscore Nationals. Check out myself at Ryan Clary 11 over on Twitter. Today's show, we're going to be talking about a Nationals prospect getting the call up to the major leagues to play in San Francisco. That'll be the very last segment. You won't want to miss that because I think Jake Alou is a very intriguing prospect that you'll want to hear about later. We got the national stock report. Who's been hot and who's been not? That will be coming up soon. But first, we're going to be starting with talking about the Nationals weekend in Arizona as obviously it was one of the wildest weekends in the Nationals young season. Before we get into it, can we just talk about how this national team so far in 2023 has just been a much better watch as of recently? And really not even as of recently, it's just been a much better product on the field. And that is something to where we are looking at this in this team. I dug this up yesterday. You can find my Twitter again at Ryan Clary 11. The Nationals are 14 and 20 on the season through 10 series against Atlanta, Tampa Bay, Colorado, the Angels, the Guardians, the Orioles, the Twins, the Mets, the Pirates, and the Diamondbacks. Those teams have a combined 571 winning percentage. This national team, they are competing right now against very good ball clubs. The two top teams in Major League Baseball with Atlanta and Tampa Bay. If you take away those two series, the Nationals will be hovering around 500. In fact, they would be, if not even a little over that. And not even to mention two ninth inning blown leads so far over this weekend on Saturday we're going to be talking about now. And then dating back against the Tampa Bay Rays, giving up five runs in the ninth inning. This Nationals team right now, they are jumping all of our expectations. And we can't continue this if it wasn't for offensive performances that have been going on as of recent. So let's get into it because Saturday night, the Nationals had a wild, wild game. As obviously we're entering the ninth inning and there wasn't really much to be said about it because we were down six to two and we knew at that moment, four run ball game in the ninth inning, we had a nice little stretch against the Cubs. It's all probably going to come crashing down, right? No, 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 no. And that is when Kiber Ruiz steps up to the plate to lead off the inning, hits a solo home run to make it 6-3. to three. Now, when he did that, one, we haven't really been seeing the power that we would like to be seeing from Kiber Ruiz. So it was nice to see him really unload on that one as it flew about 430 feet in Arizona. 6-3 to three Washington, in that moment, you're starting to think, Okay, three-run ball game. It's doable. Will this happen? We'll just have to see. And then all of a sudden, hectic, crazy, insane. There's two outs. Alex Call walks. Michael Chavez singles on a line drive. Ildemaro <laughs> Vargas coming off the IL. Singles. It's now 5-6 to six Washington. And then, and then, the Lane train, Lane Thomas steps up to the plate and hits a two-run mammoth home run with two outs. Two outs in the ninth inning. Lane Thomas, someone who at times has been a little up and down, comes up to the plate and hits 
a monster home run for his third of the season. Lane Thomas takes that lead. And we talk about Lane Thomas. You hear me talk about him a lot on this show. I like the prospect of Lane Thomas. I like what this guy can do. He's not great at anything in particular. He's good at everything. You need those players on a postseason team going down the road. And you need those teams really in any sort of situation. Someone who can play a little bit of everything. He can play center, he can play right, and he can play left. Now he's also got a little power. He can hit for average. This guy can do a lot of things really well. So he hits that home run to take the lead. It's seven to six. And now we sit there. We can't lose this game, right? We cannot lose this game. The cardiac nationals have struck again. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Kyle Finnegan, you, sir. You come into the game. You give up a home run immediately. First pitch to tie the game. First pitch to tie the game. Kyle Finnegan gives up that home run, and it all comes crashing down to earth again. Now, a lot of people are frustrated with Kyle Finnegan, as they should be, because Kyle Finnegan is someone that the Nationals thought to be a very good piece, including myself. And then after he gives up that home run, he gives up a single. Corbin Carroll walks. Dominic Fletcher gets a sack bunt. And now the game-winning runner is over on third base. Finnegan intentionally walks the runner to make it bases loaded. And then, of course, Pavin Smith walks to lose the ball game. Kyle Finnegan blew up that game in the ninth inning yet again for the Washington Nationals to blow another save. Kyle Finnegan is someone who I really like in the closing role. I liked him going a lot into this season, but now we've seen it. The guy can't do it. Not at this moment in time. That's for another day because I want to get into the closing situation, but again on Sunday was an even better win for the Washington Nationals as obviously we won that game 9-8. to eight. And when looking at that team, you go into the game with another, another one. And of course, we come out victorious yet again. Because this Nationals team was down 8-6 to six in the ninth inning. And of course, who comes in? Luis Garcia doubles to start the inning. Kiber Ruiz singles on a line drive. Luis Garcia is now at third base. Kiber Ruiz is now at first. And then Joey Manessis. Joey Bleepin' Manessis comes up. Kaba Joey hits a three-run home run for his second home run of the season, which is this is the Joey Manessis that we have been waiting very patiently for. Joey Manessis hits that ball and cranks it to make it 9-8 to eight Nationals in the ninth inning for the second day in a row. They come back in the bottom of the ninth down multiple runs for a home run to take a one-run lead. How about those Nationals? This Nationals team does not quit. Also, let's fast forward. We won the game. You come in. Hunter Harvey gets the save. His first career save, I may add, joining his father, to be, I believe, the ninth father-son duo to record a save in Major League Baseball. We're starting to see a little bit more from Hunter Harvey. That guy's going to be locking up the closer spot relatively soon in my mind. But again, we'll talk about that another day. Because there is more to talk about with this national team as they have come back from in the down in the ninth inning in back-to-back games, and they just continue to make this team Obviously, one of the more fun watches since the 2019 season. 2020 was tough. There are a lot of injuries, COVID season. It just didn't really feel real. 2021 started off nice. That little hot stretch of Kyle Schwarber was really leading the Nationals through, but that didn't really lead anywhere. We all we always kind of knew that that was going to be a house of cards situation, which it was. 2022 was the worst team in baseball. It was not a fun year last year, but now we're starting to see it. We're starting to get a little taste of success. And these young guys that we're going to be talking about 
in the National Stock Report coming up here any moment. We're going to talk about these young guys and what they have done so far. Because a lot of the young guys, like a C.J. Abrams, Luis Garcia, the middle infielders, those guys are really carrying the load right now for the Washington Nets. You're seeing guys from big trade returns, Kiber Ruiz, Josiah Gray, Mackenzie Gore, C.J. Abrams. All those guys are starting to play a big role into the Washington national success. So I'm going to get you guys up to date on the national stock report, who's been hot and who's been not. I'll tell you guys all about that. But before we do that, I have to tell you guys about our friends over at eBay Motors. And for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money comes back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. When you shop on eBay Motors and with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items up only. Exclusions always do apply. And now we get into a national stock report. But before the Nats play the Giants tonight at 940, and this is going to be a fun game as last time, it feels like the last time we played in San Francisco was the ultimate Bryce Harper fight. But you can catch every pitch of the Nats hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app search nationals. So now it's a national stock report. Who's been hot? Who's been not? Of course, we always start with a positive who's been hot. Stock up for Luis Garcia. Obviously, he had eight hits in 13 at-bats with two doubles, a home run, and two RBIs. A walk in his OPS is now up to a 737. We've talked about the deep analytics in the Luis Garcia. His chase rate is low. His strikeout rate is extremely low. His walk rate is very down. We want to see that go up. But again, he is hitting the ball well. You're starting to see his approach really change as he is being a little more patient up at bat because we've seen a lot of times Luis Garcia will swing at an 0-1 curveball that's really out of the strike zone, and it just really leaves you scratching your head and asking, why are you doing this? You know not to swing at that. Well, his approach has completely flipped over the last series. In Arizona, now let me say this, Chase Center, or Chase Field rather, has a very good batter's eye. It's always been a hitter-friendly ballpark, and in my opinion, the dimensions aren't really that part of it. It's a deep ballpark. But when looking at it, the backdrop of Chase Field, just that big green wall behind you, batters see the ball well there. Luis Garcia certainly took advantage of that and had eight hits and 13 at-bats with a walk, multiple extra base hits, a couple RBIs, and he has improved his OPS now to a 7 37, which is what we want to see from the 22-year-old. Now we have a stock report down for a bullpen piece, Thaddeus Ward. Listen, he comes in Sunday, and Thaddeus Ward hasn't really gotten the fair opportunities, in my opinion. There has been one shining issue with Thaddeus Ward, and you may ask, what is that? Well, it's been his command. At times, you see Thaddeus Ward little struggles here and there to throw strikes. So he had two and a third innings with four walks on Sunday with only one earned run. Now, let me say this. Only having one earned run in that while walking four batters is relatively pretty impressive, I will say. But at the end of the day, you cannot be walking four batters in one inning, especially when you have that command issue. Because I think Thaddeus Ward can be someone the Nationals will rely on, especially down the road. But he's got to fix these issues that he has currently right now because it is hindering him in what he can do and what he can be. Especially considering the fact that at this point, the Nationals really only have two 
great relievers in my mind. That's Mason Thompson and Hunter Harvey. Carl Edwards Jr., he comes in and he's pitched really well at times. But again, he hasn't really been that smooth, similar to Thaddeus Ward. But Thaddeus Ward has got the stuff. He's got the pitches. He's got the breaking ball. He just needs to work on his command and find the strike zone. And when he finds that strike zone, he needs to pound it because not a lot of people are getting hard contact off him. He's got the stuff, man. He's just got to work on the command. And the walk rate has to go down. It just has to. And now a stock report up for Mr. Kiber Ruiz. As Kiber Ruiz in the final two games versus Arizona after going hitless in the first game in Arizona. He went three of nine, a home run, and four RBIs. Kiba Ruiz commanding the zone behind the dish. Defensively, I've never been worried about what he can do back there. But the question is always, what can he do at the plate? Well, he went three of nine, provided a big home run, a big spark, and driving in four runs. We've talked about it with this team. If you're going to produce runs at the plate, you will be valuable to this ball club because that is something that we haven't been able to do so far. It has been our biggest Achilles heel up to this point in 2023. But now you're starting to see it with Kiber Ruiz. He's starting to be that old, reliable cleanup hitter that we all thought he could be. And you're starting to see those wheels turn. And as they continue to turn, he just gets better and better at the plate. It's his approach. He comes up there. He doesn't chase. He doesn't strike out. He's one of the tougher outs in baseball right now because of the way that he approaches every single at-bat. You won't be able to strike him out. He's going to get contact. And that in itself is valuable considering, don't even think about the hits part of it. The more you put the ball in play, the better success this team will have. It's simple. It's very simple. I'll take a little dinker to shortstop with nobody on and no outs than striking out. Because that shortstop, he could throw the ball away. He could miff it. It could eat him up. You just never really know with that. So with someone putting the ball in play, that is some value when considering this. Kibet Ruiz has the power. He has all the tools, and you're starting to see him put that together, and it is a beautiful marriage. Because when seeing that game, coming up with big hits, being the leader in the clubhouse, this is what we expected from Kibet Ruiz from day one. And honestly, that's what we should be expecting from Kibet Ruiz moving forward. Stock down, Trevor Williams. On Sunday, he went four and a third innings, five earned runs, and two home runs on Sunday. Let me say this about Trevor Williams. This was kind of the guy who I expected to be with the Nationals this year. I didn't expect a 3-3 ERA like he did with the New York Mets last year. We're using him in a role to where he hasn't really been used in a few years now. He hasn't really been a consistent starter. He started off really well. And he's not going to be losing his rotation spot anytime soon. I can guarantee you that. But then, you also can't have performances like that yesterday. Giving up five earned runs, two home runs, and really just kind of looking lifeless out there. He didn't really have his A game or really even his B game yesterday. You saw it. He wasn't really striking out the people the way that we thought he could be. He had five Ks, two walks, which is not the end of the world. It's not the worst thing ever. But again, I would like to see him produce more of his own outs. Get someone out on your own, especially in today's era where it seems to be very easy and the strikeout rate is way up. So Trevor Williams, stock down for him. I need to see just a little bit more. And now for my favorite stock up in the world, for my guy, Lane Thomas, who is on a five-game hit streak right now. He's got three RBIs against Arizona in Saturday's home run to take the lead in the ninth inning with two outs. Lane Thomas is someone who I feel like at this point, is he the most clutch hitter on the team? Because that's what I feel like with Lane Thomas. Lane Thomas in that ninth inning on Saturday night, hitting that home run, two outs, runner on. The Nationals needed a juice to keep the game alive while he hits a home run to take the lead. Obvious stock up for Lane Thomas. He's got the five-game hit streak going on. And remember, this guy has been successful at every turn 
in the second half of the season. If Lane Thomas can continue doing what he has been doing so far with the Nationals in this first half, which he has been relatively pretty hot for this team, then all signs point to him being a much better player than any of us anticipated for the Washington Nationals. But again, guys, check out tonight's Nats play. The Nationals play the Giants tonight at 940. Check out the game as Jake Alou could be making his Major League debut tonight and catch every pitch of the Nats hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search Nationals. We're going to talk about Jake Alou a little bit here, and we're also going to talk about tonight's game as Jake Irvin makes his second start of the season. So we're going to talk about Jake Irvin. We're going to talk a little about Jake Alou, the Jake bros. Can they get it done? You'll hear from me next. And now we have Jake Alou making his major league debut for the Washington Nationals. And Jake Alou has kind of been my guy from the get-go. You may say that a lot. A lot of people may say that. But again, he has been our best hitter down in the minor leagues since the pandemic season. As in 2021, this was his slash. In high A and in double A, He had a 281 batting average, a 332 on base percentage, and a 444 slugging. Then in 2022, in double A and in triple A, his slash was 299, 365, and a 506 slugging. In 2022, he hit 40 doubles and had a career high 20 home runs and 80 RBIs and 81 RBIs and 502 at bats. This guy is a hitter. He is a flat-out hitter, as Jake Lou has proven that since the pandemic. And even at his time in Boston College, back when he was a 19th-round pick from the Nationals. This kid is a hitter. He's got an average to above-average bat. He's going to hit for average. Can he do it in the major leagues? That is a big question. But at the end of the day, I look at production on all levels. This guy has hit for average basically wherever he has gone no matter the level. Yes, he did struggle at times back in 2019 with the Nationals. But look past that. He's 26 years old. This is someone who can play third base. He could stick him at second base. And also, something that I didn't really know, he could play the corner outfields, which is what he is doing because Victor Robles was placed on the injured list. So Jake Alou is someone to watch out, as I talked about him a lot for the third base competition when I wasn't too high on J-Mare Candelario. But looking at Jake Lou and what he could do, this guy can hit. He kind of reminds me of Lane Thomas or an Alex Call type. Are they major league starters every single day? Maybe not. But are they extra utility guys that you feel really comfortable with coming off the bench? Absolutely. That's the kind of tier that I put Jake Lou in. And also, I look at him, I even think his bat could be a step above those guys. I'm not meaning the power. I don't think he has the power of Lane Thomas. But the hit tool, getting on base, batting average, I think he has a little step up in that department. So Jake Alou is someone who we will be watching really closely here on Locked On Nationals moving forward as we are excited to see that kid make his major league debut. But... Speaking of Major League debut, Jake Irvin was stellar in his first game with the Washington Nationals. So tonight, he takes on the San Francisco Giants after coming off his Major League debut. Again, the 26-year-old, someone who's played a lot of baseball with Jake Alou down in the minors. What can we expect from him? Because he's kind of the two-trick pony right now with a fastball and a curveball. Someone pointed me out this the other day, that Spencer Strider is also a two-pitch player but at the end of the day Spencer Strider his stuff is so far above the other pitchers in baseball that it's just a little different Jake Irvin is not there yet he's not Spencer Strider unfortunately but Jake Irvin has been a quality starter and he has been that again since the pandemic we talk about it that 2020 season really hindered a lot of these prospects and their development but some of those guys like a Jake Irvin, like a Jake Alou, 
came out of that pandemic on fire. And a lot of them just stayed on fire as Jake Irvin kind of did the same thing as a Lou. So with what Jake Irvin can do tonight, one, most importantly, you have to get this guy run production. Second, you have to have solid defense behind him. He's not really this big strikeout pitcher. He relies a lot on the defense, a lot of ground balls, pop outs, all those simple things. Because last game, he only gave up, what, two hits in his major league debut? Only struck out three? So this guy, at the end of the day, he's got what it takes, obviously. Can he be that kind of out-of-nowhere prospect for the Nationals to really come in and step up and play a huge role into this team? Maybe. Because seriously, this guy looked that good in his first start. And plus, I love the playing on him. I love his frame. He has got a 6'6". He's 6'6", with 227 pounds on him. He's a big kid out there. So when looking at what he can do, he can certainly be a menace on that mound. But now looking at Jake Irvin, tonight it's going to be a tough matchup against a relatively pretty solid San Francisco Giants squad. Now they haven't really lived up to all the expectations in the world, but again, what Jake Irvin does best is get out and rely on the defense. So the defense is going to have to be stout tonight. If Jake Alou gets in the outfield, if he starts tonight, which I don't think he will, he's going to have to play really well out there defensively because that is a tricky place to play there at AT&T Field. You got the weird wins there, a lot of different wind patterns going on. Once the ball gets up in the air, you don't really know what it could be doing. So the defense is going to be very important tonight, and we're going to have to see the outfield step it up for our guy, Jake Irvin. So thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day. Now, tomorrow, we're going to talk about Jake Irvin's start. If Jake Alou got in the game, we're going to talk about what he did, what he didn't do. You will be all up to date on the Washington Nationals, as always, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you get your team every single day. Again, guys, make sure to tune in to the Nationals game tonight on the SXM app. You won't want to miss a pitch there because that, my friends, is a pretty fun experience to be listening to Charlie and Dave on the XM app. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Go Nationals. Hopefully we get a win tonight.